So me and Ben have just got in from filming and this is the result. Check the snotsicles on this. Oh my God, that's absolutely horrible. Oh, it's cold. So we've been out here for like, I don't know, an hour and a half and this is the result. And it gives you an idea of why it's so difficult to operate here. All the planes are grounded. They're saying we won't fly anywhere for at least three days. Oh, gotta get in. So that was about five weeks into my trip to West Antarctica. It's one of the most isolated and stormy places on Earth, and there's nothing but ice for a thousand miles all around. The scientists here at this camp on the Antarctic ice sheet are doing a massively important job. They're trying to, trying to find out how climate change is driving up sea levels. But what does it take to actually do science in somewhere as extreme as this? So it's taken loads of preparation just to get the scientists out here. There were two ice strengthened British ships that brought hundreds of tonnes of fuel and cargo to a remote ice shelf. Then this team of specialist snow vehicles dragged it over land. Really tough terrain, horrible weather and all at just 10 miles an hour. The Thwaites collaboration is the biggest field program ever conducted in Antarctica. These vehicles have transformed the science that we can do, increasing the scale, the number of people and the number of scientists we can bring to bear on these problems. So driving across 800 miles of featureless Antarctic ice and transporting 650 tonnes of cargo to this site is a tremendous operation. The US, they provided the planes, flying the scientists and their equipment, ferrying everything down to the camps at the front. But then the really hard work began, digging snow, loads and loads of digging, because they needed to fill up this, a water container the size of a small swimming pool. This will be the most southerly jacuzzi in the world, I think. <laughs> So what happened is a bank of boilers would then heat the water just below boiling point and then they'd use that hot water to drill down through the ice. So these pictures are pretty special. They're from a kind of frontier that's changing our world, the seawater that's melting what they call the doomsday glacier. I was yelling and screaming like, oh my God, we're there, we're there, we're there. You can kind of see the water, uh, the water column narrowing and the ice coming down at you and the seafloor coming out at you and it's just this huge rush of energy. The bed of a glacier is a place we've just really never been and particularly right here where it starts to go afloat. So it's only by taking measurements here that the scientists can hope to get accurate predictions of how sea level is going to rise in the future, even though it did arouse the curiosity of some of the creatures that live here. So it's a really difficult, dangerous and expensive place to work. Six people can do a huge amount, but we just truck along day from day. Nobody really knows where we are. And then we just suddenly turn up <laughs> delivering bounty. <laughs> The work this year has confirmed the scientists' worst fears. Warm seawater is melting the ice of West Antarctica and it's doing so increasingly rapidly, raising sea levels worldwide. So what do we do? Well, we've got to think about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but also we've got to think about preparing for the rising oceans we are going to face in the decades to come.